Welcome to this video about the Chinese console Chrome extension. It's an extension to help people learning Chinese and trying to read Chinese on online. And um, I'm just hoping to walk through the basic functionality of the, the newest version of the, the Chinese console extension. So the place you'd go to download this is the Chrome store. And here's a link up here, and I will actually keep this, I'll keep a link to this in the description below. Um, you can see right here I have it already stall installed, but if you don't yet, this will say install from Chrome. So let's go through the basic features of, of how this plugin works. And um, there's a good number of features in the newest version. I guess I published this maybe about, I don't know, four or five years ago. I've been using it ever since, and it's helped me out, but I wanted to add some new functionality. So... Uh, just briefly about me, I am a software engineer by day. I also love to learn languages and travel and have spent a lot of time trying to learn Chinese as well as a bunch of European languages. So that's my background and my motivation. Okay, let's get down to it, shall we? So here's a website, Baidu. And if you're trying to reuse these, read this page without some help, if you're like me, you're going to run into a lot of trouble very fast. So once you install this extension, you'll see a little icon up here in the top, and you can click this icon, and you'll see uh, some instructions for how to use this. Um, this is kind of a, I guess you might call it a modal uh, interface, so you have to hold down a key in order to make it work, and the purpose of that is to get out of the way of whatever website you're working in. I didn't want to have this working all of the time. I wanted to be able to mouse over and actually not show any information. So the first, uh, the first thing to do is press down the Alt key. And this is configurable, by the way. You can actually go to the, um, the configuration up top here and change that Alt key to something else. But I get ahead of myself. So you hit the Alt key, and then you hover your mouse over the, over the web page, and you can see information about characters. So there's a lot going on here, so I'll break down. This right here is kind of a floating pop-up window, and this is the general approach that other plugins like this take. Um, I made this to not necessarily have the, the pop-up window, so if you come over here, there's a, a little floating info box. You can toggle this on and off, uh, and when it's on, it will show. And when it's off, obviously, it won't show. You'll just get this console of information on the right-hand side. So there's not, there's not a whole lot of information in this bubble. Um, there's just pronunciation, the pinyin, and the, uh, the Chinese traditional and uh, rather simplified over in the left and traditional on the right, and a definition. If you want to get a little bit more information about these, you can um, take a look at the right-hand side. Um, right, so what should I tell you next? So I mostly actually work with this disabled, but there is a there is a minimize mode right here where you can minimize this and the extension hangs out in the upper right hand corner. And if you do have that floater window enabled, um, it will that'll be the only thing you see on the screen. All right. So what what kind of information is here? So this right here is a history of the characters you've looked up. So if you hit the activation button and you can see that the characters. Uh, the previous ones you looked up are, are here, so you can kind of go back in time uh, through the things you've looked up. Uh, down here we have the pinyin, and then here we have simplified and traditional characters over here. Underneath we have the HSK level, um, which corresponds to, I think it stands for Hanyu Shui Pin Kao Shi, something like that, just the uh, standard Chinese proficiency test level that this corresponds to, one through six. Um, down here is the definition, uh, and this is the next character. So usually if you search, it'll search for the longest word, and, and then it'll give you different character details for each character in that word. Um, so if, it, if it's just one character being shown here, you'll see information about its frequency uh, in the language, and uh, there are Currently, here you can see frequency of on the on the specific page we're on. So, uh, if you count up all the the characters on this page, this is the 25th most frequent character on the page. May or may not be useful for you. You can actually toggle all of these things on and off through uh, this interface, and we'll get to that in just a second. Next, we have uh, 
radical breakdown. So we have two different characters here, the, the traditional on the right and the uh, simplified on the left, and each one has different component parts. And so you can see the component parts for each for each here, footsteps, bow, etc. This bit right here corresponds to characters that are similar to this particular character, ones you might confuse it with. And actually these look pretty darn similar to me. Down here, this is common words that contain this particular character. So you can see chufa uh, in, in both traditional and uh, simplified. You can hover over these obviously and get some information about them. If all of this information is a bit overkill for your purposes, all of these little bits down here on the left and the HSK are configurable through this interface, so you can choose to show the history or not, the HSK or not, and the toggle display of character rank information, so this or not, and stuff on the page or not, etc. So you can kind of configure this to you. So this is the, the, the most bare bones version of this. So when you search, it'll just it'll just show this information. I find the HSK very helpful, and usually the common words I might confuse it with, and common words, not so much this sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of it for the specific info that can be shown. Um, as far as what else you can do with this, the main configuration up here, this uh, is obviously on the right-hand side. You might prefer this to be on the left-hand side or you might prefer, prefer it just to be in one of the corners. So depending on your, you know, your preferences, you can put this in one of the corners. And uh, the thing to note about these preferences is they're global by default. If you have two windows, so if I, see if I can do this. So if I can make it go on the left-hand side here, the next time I load up this window, if I refresh the page, it's gonna be in the left-hand corner. And that's because it assumes that you want all of your console windows to look the same. There is an option if you want to have a configuration separate for a specific website, you can go into the configuration and then you can say keep separate settings for this particular website. Um, and that will allow you to have global settings that are one way and then specific website settings that are a different way. What else can we configure here? Uh, so th this is highlight characters on the page by language frequency. Um, this may or may not be useful to you. I definitely tend to find it helpful when reading an article to know which um, which characters are very uncommon and which characters are pretty common. It helped me especially in the beginning. So if I um, I can look here and see that hoi and wait, these are all quite common. And then the red ones I might not want to spend so much time with because they're less common. Um, but you'll, you'll get a, a feeling for where your level is if you're kind of if you've got all the green ones, got all the yellow ones, you might be interested in making sure you have the red ones as well. This this does uh, this one here on the right does something similar, but instead of being language frequency, it's page frequency. So you can highlight the characters on the page according to their distribution on this particular page, which may or may not be useful to you, but you don't have to use it if it's not. <laughs> um, another thing that I built into this is the, the the ability to see an image. I'm trying to, what is this? Dying. So we have a movie, and if we see images related to this, we can kind of get a feel. Sometimes if a word is hard to, to understand or we're not quite sure what to make. So this is Sichuan. This is the province. Um, we can generally get a, a feeling for some of these words, and this is helpful for me personally when I'm not quite sure how to interpret the word I'm seeing. Uh, this little button shows you more in usage instructions in case you forgot them. And right here you can share this on, on the, the, the usual suspect sharing platforms. There is a Facebook uh, page and you're welcome to follow that to get updates and um, maybe have conversations about things. And down here on the bottom, uh, obviously um, this isn't really a commercial venture, it's mostly just out there to help people, but I noticed that if you don't have ratings, people don't necessarily think that it's worth exploring and checking out to see if it's useful for them. So if you do end up using this and you do like it, it would be very helpful um, to, to give it a, a rating. So if there's something wrong with, with the way this is working and not out of the uh, realm of possibility, 
Um, I would appreciate knowing about it. It's hard to know platforms are different. Um, so you can report a bug right here if you click this button, it'll take you to the GitHub page for this particular plugin. And if you open up an issue, I can respond and we can chat about it and help get it fixed. This is about me. Like I said, there's a little bit about me. You're welcome to check out my LinkedIn profile if, you, if that's interesting to you. Um, and feature requests, I think this just goes to the GitHub page too. You can make a new issue about feature requests if you have any. That's mostly everything that this thing does at the moment. There are probably some features that, that you're interested in. You're welcome to, that aren't currently developed. You're welcome to send me a feature request. Uh, and if you're just interested in chatting or collaborating on anything else, you're, you're welcome to send me a, a friend request or a message on LinkedIn and we can communicate or, and or collaborate. And happy Chinese reading on the internet. Take care.